In the book of Exodus and in Numbers 35, we're introduced to the cities of refuge. Now you may ask why? Well, we know that Old Testament law clearly stated that anyone who committed a murder was to be put to death. But for unintentional or unclear situations, God set aside these cities of refuge. You see, the Bible makes a clear distinction between killing and murder. You see, all murder is killing, but not all killing is murder. And so God established cities of refuge to be a place where an individual could find refuge if he was involved in the death of an individual. And if he was found innocent of the death, he could live in that city safely. But if he left the city of refuge before the death of the high priest, well, he opened himself up to whatever judgment the loved ones of the deceased would bring upon him. Now, you may ask, how does this passage, these cities of refuge, how does this relate to me? Well, the author of Hebrews in chapter 6 says something very interesting. He says, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. I love how Pastor David Guzik comments on this. He shares that both Jesus and the cities of refuge are within easy reach of the needy person. Both Jesus and the cities of refuge provide protection only within their boundaries. To go outside means death. But there's a crucial distinction. The cities of refuge only help the innocent. But see, the guilty can come to Jesus and find refuge. And that's every single one of us, guilty of the penalty of sin. But because of the life and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, it's in him that we find refuge.